husband and I met in college and we were both majoring in photography yes. and he decided to do his master's thesis on the Hare Krishna people and I joined him in India while he was working on that thesis. So we became devotees at this similar time and we both had an interest in photography. So naturally as devotees we started using our photography in Prabhupada's service and Prabhupada encouraged us in that way. And that was very helpful in terms of a common interest and a common way to try to please Srila Prabhupada. And we also had the opportunity to travel with Prabhupada and film him and photograph him. So that kind of unity between husband and wife I think is helpful in the relationship because we had a lot to share with each other and have a lot to share with each other in doing our service. And Prabhupada also encouraged us. He saw the films that we made and the still pictures and would sometimes comment on them and encourage devotees to show the films and make more films, encourage us to make more films. So we, my husband and I bonded over that service and it's carried us through decades now of service. Yes, at one point we were, I read in Srila Prabhupada's books that married life without children is zero. So we were filming him in Los Angeles as he was walking, chanting Japa in his room. And we asked him that question. Srila Prabhupada, you say that in your books that married life without children is zero. So we had no children. We, did, we were producing films. <laughs> so Prabhupada looked at us and he said, make Krishna your child. So after 19, from 1973 to 1986, we produced films. And then in 1982, we had our first daughter. Name was, his name is, her name is uh, Amrita. Initiated Rasamrita. And then in 19, 10 years later, in 1994, or three, we had Hari Priya, so two daughters, and uh, they've been a joy in our life. They're both devotees, uh, initiated, initiated by Radhana Swami, and uh, taking Krishna consciousness very seriously. So we feel very fortunate to have those two daughters. And. As far as instructions for Grihastha life, Prabhupada didn't directly instruct us, but the mood always, especially in the early days, was really focused around service. And we were very busy. We lived in the temple, so my husband would live in the men's ashram, I would live in the women's ashram. We were traveling, and very often it was austere conditions, and we weren't so much focused on developing the Grihastha Ashram that came later. But in the early days, in India especially, it was more focused on service. And then later, especially after Prabhupada left, then when we were living together and raising our children, then the relationship became more prominent. And we had to figure out how to make it work, how to try to encourage our children to be Krishna conscious. And we found that Force doesn't work at all. Far better than force with children is example. That if they see their parents engaged in service, see them that they're chanting and they're feeling some satisfaction from that, that's much better than trying to impose on them, oh, you chant this many rounds, you go to the temple this many times. So that was there. And also the idea that trying to ensure that their friends were devotees putting them in an environment where instead of having non-devotee friends, they would have friendship with devotees, go to school with devotees, their teachers would be devotees. This always impacts children, sometimes far greater than their parents, especially as they get older and come to the teenage years. Then their 
their peers have a tremendous impact on them and their parents' impact becomes less and less and less. So if their peers are devotees, it's very wonderful because it means they're following the regulative principles, they're chanting, they're hearing something. When they go to their friend's home, they have the same values that their parents have in that way. Yeah, we actually moved quite a few times <clears throat> just so our children could go to devotee schools. We moved from Los Angeles. As filmmakers, that's the capital of the, wor of the filmmaking world, Hollywood. <laughs> we were actually making our films in Hollywood, living at the temple. Uh, but we left there in 1999 to go to Sharanagati, Canada where there was a nice, nice school for devotees. We find that <clears throat> that was very important for uh, our children to be in a, an environment with uh, devotee teachers and devotee peers, students. So I think that made a, made a big difference. Um, Maybe something that some many times devotees ask how to raise your, our children so they become devotees. You know, it's, it's a bit of a gamble when you have children. You can't always you know, expect them to become like we want them to become. And sometimes they're radically different. We've seen with friends, like other Grihasta couples. Uh, the children are, are actually not following, don't seem to be following anything. Uh, even in, in the case of very strict, wonderful uh, devotee couples, their children don't turn out the way they would have hoped. But nevertheless, a birth in, any, in a devotee's family is, is still beneficial, no matter what they seem to be when they're growing up. Uh, that's always beneficial. So we've seen also some devotees' children grow up in a very uh, difficult, have a very difficult time in Krishna consciousness, but eventually many of them come back to associate with devotees and become you know, very nice devotees. So expectations, we can't always uh, force them. We can't really never force them on our children but just try to bring them up with love and care. No, it, <clears throat> austerity is always there. It's just a matter of degree. It's, it's austere to, to, to be in the West and to have to go out and work in an outside job. But here, here in Mayapur there's difficulties also. There's going to be difficulties everywhere. So we have, have to tolerate it and try to do the best for uh, the children. You know, it's hard to give a, a straight answer or one answer for every situation. Living in Mayapur has its challenges, especially for Westerners year-round. Not easy. We know Mukunda Prabhu has two two sons, he and his wife, and they're they're very happy here. So it's um, really depends on the people and the circumstances. Some, some couples come and they can't stay, you know, just they'll stay a few months and leave and never come back. So there, there's wonderful educational facilities in Alachua, where we live, also in uh, Australia. So there's very nice facilities for educating the children in different parts of the world, Mayapur included. Prabhupada was shown a cartoon. Do you know that? He didn't like it. <laughs> he didn't like it. It was a cartoon of, of uh, Lord Nishringadev. <clears throat> but it was done quite crudely. And Prabhupada didn't like it. But I think if something's done, you know, cartoons can be very nicely done or very poorly done. If it's very nicely done with taste. I think Prabhupada might appreciate if it's done properly. Um, but there should be, you know, entertainment, Krishna conscious entertainment for all devotees, children and adults. 
Otherwise, the tendency is to go out and, and look at outside films. And that's not so good. Um, especially in the West, <clears throat> we see that you know, devotee families sometimes themselves, they themselves, the parents, watch a lot of movies. And then, the, of course, the children will also follow suit. They'll do the same. Uh, we had experience in Sharanagati, one family, just constantly having films in the house for themselves and their children. So that's not ideal. We should try to have as much Krishna conscious entertainment as possible. And that also applies, <coughs> fits in with the culture of Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada wanted, wanted a culture of Krishna consciousness. M music, dance, films, art, <coughs> so many different types of art forms uh, centered on Krishna and his pastimes. So that's a big, a big job. To, that. So we encourage, you know, filmmakers from all over the world to, and you know, devotees from in, in any of the arts to produce more and more things that devotees can watch and take pleasure in. Were you, were you, one thing, were you asking about the uh, propensity of the, of the children, how how to know the propensity of the child? Were you asking about that? Did you get an answer? No. Uh, I think you you were asking if the guru, if that's the place of the guru to try to see the propensity of the child and guide him or her in that way. That's also there, but the parents should have a say in that also. The parents really know very deeply the mentality and the, as Prabhupada said, psychophysical makeup of the child. So I think I think both can have a, a, a hand in guiding the child in that way, in terms of the long-term uh, occupation. We, you know, we need, we need actors, actresses. We need good movie scripts, writers. So we, we need, you know, all, all the uh, talents in Vishnu service. Nothing left out. You know, because that <clears throat> in the future that that will happen more and more, and the persons in the beginning they're pioneers to try to establish that that uh, art that form of culture within our society. It's very important, and there may be some sacrifice have to be made initially in the beginning, but that's if it pleases Krishna, we should do it. Oh, our, our film we're working on, Acharya film, is not finished yet. We're, we're a little late. Devotees are asking us when it's going to be finished, but we're not, we're not giving a date because we really don't know. We just want to make it the best possible. I think the more work we put into it, the better it will get. Of course, there's a point where you need to finish it quickly and release. We're, we're not at that point yet but it's coming close. As far as future plans? Can you answer that? <laughs> uh, you know, we've all, I've always and we've always pretty much done what's necessary, what the devotees have asked of, of us in our filmmaking. In um, our first film, Hare Krishna People, was commissioned by Karander Prabhu, he was head of the BBT at the time, and he asked us to do a film in the movement. And one of the, another film, Spiritual Frontier, that was on New Vrindavan, we were asked to do that. Kirtan Nandaswamy wanted the film on New Vrindavan. And then another film on book production, we were asked to do that by uh, Srila Prabhupada wanted something to show his godbrothers in 1975 five or six, six, how he was doing the work of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati in, in producing books and dis producing and distributing books. So we made a film called Brilliant as the Sun. 
And then we were requested again to do another film on the movement, an updated film that's called World of Hare Krishna. And then I asked Prabhupada early on if we could do a film on his life, and he agreed, and that was called Your Ever Well Wisher. It's pretty much been requests by devotees, that, you know, according to the need of the society, what projects we're going to do next. But we're not sure about the next project. We have, you know, some ideas, but we'll, we'll see what develops. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you.